welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking all about my first trimester, how I was feeling, different symptoms I felt, and all of that good stuff. I know when I was in my first trimester, I watched a lot of these videos because I was looking for someone to confirm what I was feeling was normal. I feel like I had a very good first trimester. It wasn't anything crazy, very normal stuff, but I don't feel like it was so extreme. Like I hear some girls and they talk about how they were like over the toilet the whole trimester and that just was not my experience. And so I was looking for people who also didn't feel super sick to tell me that was also something they felt and that their baby was healthy because I'll get into the mental side of it, but I just like really was looking for confirmation that everything was okay even though I wasn't throwing it. Okay, I don't know the best way to go about this. Um, I have written out in my notes like week by week different symptoms that I felt. So I ended up taking a positive pregnancy test at four weeks and five days. And so I was maybe a little bit farther along in my symptoms than I had realized, but they just felt like period symptoms at first. So one of those things was cramping. After I knew I was pregnant, I obviously knew those were not period cramps and those were the implantation cramps. Is that how you say that word, implantation? It just sounds wrong to me. Anyways, I feel like I felt those for like a good week and a half to two weeks. I feel like I felt it for week five and week six, which was kind of surprising to me, but I remember at week five, like when I first found out and I was having those cramps, like when I would lay down, it would get a lot worse. I had lots of burps <laughs> while I was eating. It's so funny to look back on the video of me and Nolan taking a pregnancy test together because I'm burping the whole time. I think the standard way is 15. I think you have to pay extra to find out. <laughs> At 10 weeks. Now looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is one of your pregnancy <laughs> symptoms and I just didn't realize it at the time because I didn't know I was pregnant necessarily. And I felt like there was like food stuck in my throat. I don't know what causes that. Maybe just like a little bit of indigestion. I would get crazy bloated after I ate abnormally. So like even though I was eating like fruits and like vegetables and things that didn't upset my stomach, I'd get really bloated. I started becoming very emotional, like crying super easily. This is, this whole video might just be a little bit of TMI sprinkled in there, but I was pooping a lot, which was not something, that's not something that's very normal for me. I tend to be a little bit constipated. I have my whole life. And I remember pooping very frequently. I also started hardcore craving salty things like pickles and chips. My armpits right here, so itchy. Like my fr whole first trimester, like so much so that like, I just wanted to like tear my skin off. It was so itchy. And so I have that down. And it also like right in between my boobs got that kind of itchy as well. This was something I had prior to finding out I was pregnant, but it's actually something that's gotten better, but hasn't gone away. And I Googled it and it worried me. And so I'm just like, I think it's probably a hormonal normal thing. And then I also just was experiencing extremely, extremely dry skin, kind of all of a sudden, which, isn't necessarily normal for me. I think it was towards the end of week six, um, I started getting a little nauseous. The best way I can describe it is almost like if you're in the back of a car and you get like car sick, that kind of like motion sickness feeling is kind of how I felt. And it kind of lasted all day. From week six through nine, I felt kind of that motion sickness all day, especially if I moved around a lot. At work, I have two monitors and I would look back and forth and that looking back and forth made me feel so dizzy, like I was gonna puke, driving, um, that kind of stuff. It never got worse than I think it was at like week six and seven because I kind of learned how to handle it. I realized if I had food in my stomach, it helped a lot. And so, cause prior to getting pregnant, I never really ate breakfast. I would have like a small lunch and then I'd eat dinner and I was not a snacker. I never required a lot of calories. And so I quickly realized I can't keep doing this. I need to keep food in my stomach, whether I'm hungry or not, I need to eat something. And that helped so much with that like motion sickness feeling. Also in week six, I said, all of a sudden I'm extremely constipated. <laughs> <laughs> and the constipation lasted a little bit through my second trimester. And that's actually completely normal. It's like a hormonal thing that keeps, that gets you constipated. I was recommended by a doctor to get 
Colace. Um, it's like a stool softener. Even that didn't really help. And it also contributes to you just not feeling as good when you can't poop. <laughs> I said I was extremely fatigued and had a lack of motivation. Um, I was in the middle of a very crazy tax season. So I wasn't getting a ton of sleep anyways. And I was working really, really long hours and like maybe having one day off. It was already exhausting, but I just felt like I cannot continue. Like I am so tired and I don't even want to work. It, it was a weird kind of feeling. It was more than just like tiredness. It's just like extreme fatigue. And that lasted, I would say till like week nine or 10. So now I'll kind of talk about like the psychological side a little bit too. Cause I started feeling at week six and seven and partially this is probably due to the fact that <laughs> Nolan and I didn't tell a single person we were pregnant until week 10, not by choice, just because we live far away from all of our families. We didn't want to tell them over the phone. We wanted to tell them in person. 10 weeks weeks was the earliest we could tell anybody and it made it really hard to connect in my brain that I was pregnant and I really struggled with that up until our eight week ultrasound just feeling like I was pregnant and that there was a baby in there that was healthy I think I had a lot of anxiety and stress around is the baby okay which I also think is very normal but not being able to talk to anyone about my pregnancy made it feel less real if that makes sense because if you're talking about it with your friends and family that's kind of what makes it feel real in the first trimester because you're not showing you just feel sick you don't feel baby moving around like you've never seen an ultrasound of the baby up until you know week eight or however early i guess you get your ultrasound but it was so hard for me and I thought that when I was pregnant, it would feel a certain way. And it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel like there was something in my stomach. And now I'm like, well, that's because it's like that big. It's like a little poppy seed. That was a hard thing. And the way that I really got through it is just praying every single day. Anytime I felt any kind of fear or negative thoughts, I would pray. I literally listened to a worship playlist 24 7 well not 24 7 i didn't listen to it when i was sleeping but pretty much all my waking hours i had worship music playing and that really helped bring me peace because all i wanted was for that baby to be healthy our eight week ultrasound was really nice to like see him and see his little heart fluttering and know like okay everything's okay. So I just wanted to touch on that a little bit because if you're going through that, I think it's completely normal, especially if you haven't told anybody and it gets better. It gets a lot better when you tell people and also just when you have those ultrasounds and know that everything's okay. At week seven, I said nausea comes, nausea, nausea, nausea. <laughs> nausea comes in waves now. So I think this was because I was figuring out if empty stomach was my worst nightmare. Um, so just keeping food in, but that doesn't mean that certain smells didn't set me off. Like at work, because it was tax season, we were catering in food a lot. And I, my office is right next to where they would set up all the food. And I would just sit there with my peppermint oil on my finger, like <sighs> trying not to puke. It was so hard. Even like the smell of bacon, no one made bacon one night. And I literally had to go outside because I was like, I, that actually almost made me vomit. <laughs> I also just had a aversion to all types of food. That has not gone away yet. I'm not somebody that loves eating. Like eating is something I do because I have to. <laughs> and so I was always really excited to be pregnant because everyone talks about like your intense cravings. Like, oh, I just really want this. And I was like, I'm excited for that because I am not a foodie. I don't get like crazy cravings. And so when I'm pregnant, I'm gonna just like know what I want and no the opposite has happened. I know what I don't want. Everything else is like, okay, fine, I'll eat that. <laughs> um, it was really bad in the first trimester though, because certain foods, actually majority of foods, just the process of eating made me gag. Like I'd sit there and I'd be like, you know, dry heaving the whole time. And it was not very pleasant to eat with me. <laughs> Nolan can tell you. That wasn't super fun. Eating, just like I dreaded eating. I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm gonna have to eat something and gag the whole way through it. The smell of food makes me dry heave. I'm very tired. I need 10 hours of sleep and want to go to bed at 6.30. I don't feel like that's quite gone away. I require a lot more sleep than I did before. Before, if I got eight hours, I was like living my best life. And now I'm like, I need 10. <laughs> 
I also started feeling like I was getting that pregnancy brain. And whenever I heard people talk about it before I was pregnant, I was just like, you're just making that up. You're just using your pregnancy as an excuse. Well, um, that, I think it's a real thing. I definitely experienced it towards the end of my first trimester. I felt so stupid. And I think it's kind of because you're just really tired. Like I could not remember things that happened like yesterday. I was like trying to think and think. I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so stupid. I wasn't like so forgetful necessarily. Like, oh, what am I doing? Pregnancy brain's definitely a real thing. <laughs> I felt just really foggy brained. So I also started experiencing sun sensitivity. I got burnt super easily, which also we were coming out of the winter time. This was like April by now, but I hadn't been out the sun a lot, but I, I don't like get burnt really, really easily. And I fried. You would have thought I was in the middle of the Caribbean without an ounce of sunscreen on. It was bad. And I read, that is a pregnancy thing. Um, I feel like it's gone away though because it's now the middle of summer and I can go outside and be okay. I also had flawless skin, which made me think I was having a boy because they say girls take your beauty and I felt really pretty. <laughs> I didn't have any pimples. My skin was just like kind of glowing and I really loved that pregnancy symptom. That's one I would love every single time. <laughs> In week eight, I said I had the same symptoms. My nipples hurt really bad though. Like they'd get hard and they would stay hard. Like if I didn't have like a bra on or something. And I do not, I have very tough boobs and nipples. <laughs> And oh my gosh, this hurts so bad. I don't really know why that happens. I think it's a hormonal thing, but oof, I was starting to get like a small baby bump in the morning, which now I look back at pictures. I'm like, Madeline, you did not have a baby bump. But it felt like it at the time because I was used to having like a semi-flat stomach. I noticed that I had something growing in there. Maybe it was bloat, maybe it was a poop bump. I don't know, but it was exciting. We had our first OB appointment where we got to have an ultrasound and see the tiny little nugget in there and see his little heart fluttering, which was so much fun. I had so much peace after that ultrasound. That's exactly what I needed for my mental health. So around week eight, I also started feeling super congested. I actually thought I was getting sick. On Saturday, I turned like the next week and we watch all the videos and stuff from the apps. And it was like around week eight, you might be experiencing congestion. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, that's what I'm experiencing. It was like pretty bad at first. Like I sounded like I had my nose pinched. That's also not gone away. Apparently it's something to do with like your nasal canal like swells up. And so you just, can't breathe as easily, you're congested, who knows. I also started craving sweets around week eight, uh, which kind of only lasted two weeks. And I wasn't really craving sweets, it was kind of like frozen yogurt, which I had once. <laughs> I didn't really feed into my sweet cravings and they weren't like, it was like, oh, I kind of want something sweet. It wasn't like an intense craving. Oh, I did eat Starburst though and jelly beans. We had jelly beans in my office too and I ate some of those and they just did not hit the spot. I'm just, I don't eat candy. And so I was like, oh, these are really disappointing. And so I feel like that kind of just cut off that sweet craving. So week nine, I said my bump is really starting to round out. And I do have to say, I definitely got a baby bump very early for this being my first pregnancy. Like once people found out we were pregnant, they were like, you look like this is your second pregnancy. Like your body knows just how to expand, which usually it takes a lot longer your first pregnancy. I have no idea why that is. I had several people go, are you sure you're not having twins? <laughs> just because of how early I was like actually kind of showing. I also started noticing the hairs on my belly starting to grow pretty long, which I have very like white hair on my stomach. So that's a plus, but I'm also just like not a hairy person at all. I'm, like my arms have hair, but like not a ton. And so that was really weird when my stomach started growing hair and it was kind of long. Thankfully it's blonde. I said that my boobs aren't fitting in my bras or bathing suits like they used to. They weren't bigger necessarily. They were just fuller. We started swimming a lot during this time and I was like, none of my bathing suits are appropriate to wear around anyone besides my husband anymore. And so I ended up having to get a couple new bathing suits, which I was like, I probably needed to do this anyways because 
I'm gonna be breastfeeding, so that also makes your boobs a little fuller. I also said I was thirsty all the time, which is a good thing to drink lots of water. I was starting to get some motivation back around week nine. I said I cleaned the whole backyard and the whole house, which at that time, like I think our house went a month and a half without getting cleaned because I was so tired all the time. I also, around week nine, started peeing all the time. Even at night, if I didn't drink water before I went to bed, I would intensely have to pee. Like I'd be laying there like, oh my gosh, my bladder feels so full. And I'd go to the bathroom and I'm like, oh, it's not even that full. And I had to pee very, very frequently. So weeks 10 through 13, I didn't have such specific symptoms. My symptoms kind of just toned down a little bit. The nauseous thing went away. Um, it would just be gagging if I was eating certain foods. I just felt tired all the time. <laughs> Whether or not I got a good night's sleep, I got 10 hours of sleep, 12 hours of sleep, it didn't matter. I was very tired and I got tired really easily. All day, every day, I'm like, when can I go to bed? <laughs> and then lastly, I said, I have no aversion to all foods. I said, I mostly like spicy foods or Asian food. Those were like the, and I liked Mexican as well, depending on what I was eating. I liked chips and salt. <laughs> it, it was very hit or miss, but typically I was kind of craving Asian food. So those were kind of my symptoms from weeks five through 13. Again, I didn't have anything super crazy. Like I felt very, very, very fortunate that I wasn't super sick. And at first, like I said in the beginning of the video, that made me a little bit worried that things were not okay. But it, it's just how my body reacts to pregnancy and everybody is so different. I just feel very lucky <laughs> that I didn't feel super sick. Maybe that's because I'm pregnant with a boy. I know that's the old wise tale. I also asked Instagram and YouTube if you guys had any specific questions that you wanted me to answer in this video. And so I'm gonna answer a couple of those real quick. So the first question is, how do you feel about your body changes? And so far I have loved watching my body change. Spoiler alert, I guess. <laughs> I am 20 weeks today and I haven't gained any weight yet. I have a fairly large baby bump. So that's helped as well with me feeling good about my body. But it's just so incredible that your body just like knows how to get pregnant, knows how to grow this little life and keep it safe. Like it's so crazy. And I'm so appreciative of all the things my body is doing and I'm loving watching it change. Okay, the next question, what was the most unpleasant of all the symptoms you experienced? Again, I was very lucky with the symptoms um, that they weren't so extreme and not like debilitating at all. Um, I still worked and everything through it all, but I honestly would have to say the tiredness was kind of the hardest. Um, even like feeling nauseous is not fun, but like the tiredness, there's just nothing you can do about it. Like no matter how much sleep I got, I was still super tired, just having no motivation. But Again, that's normal. Your body's growing this amazing human being and so much happens during the first trimester. It blew my mind that the baby is like fully developed at 13 weeks and all they need to do is grow bigger and stronger. I was like, what? It happens all in 13 weeks? That's a, that's a miracle. Okay, so a couple of these questions I'm gonna actually answer in my second trimester video. So I'll end on this one. Funniest thing that happened in your first trimester. There was a couple funny moments. One of the funniest things that happened, and I this was before I even found out I was pregnant, um, but it was in my first trimester. Um, like I said, I was very emotional. One morning woke up and I was craving pancakes, which is weird. I don't like pancakes. I've not liked pancakes probably since I was like six years old. So I was craving pancakes, which was kind of weird. So I told Nolan, cause he loves pancakes. So I knew he'd be really excited. It was like a Sunday morning. I was like, let's make some pancakes. And he's like, okay. I make them gluten free, dairy free because I'm gluten free and dairy free. Anyways, so I'm making these pancakes and the recipe is just very different. You know, you have your like coconut flour and you use syrup and I think I put bananas in it or something. Like it has just some different ingredients. But one of the key ingredients was syrup in the batter. So I made all these pancakes and it took a long time um, to like make all the pancakes. It was a very large recipe. And so finally we're like ready to eat and I was so excited to have my pancakes. They looked so good. Nolan pours out the syrup to put over the pancakes and he goes, uh, the syrup is moldy. And I'm like, moldy? The syrup gets moldy? And so we like took off the thing and he kind of like poured it out. Sure enough, there was just this thick, 
fuzzy layer of green mold over it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the syrup I used in our pancakes. And I was like, well, we can't eat them now. <laughs> and I cried. I literally cried because we couldn't have pancakes. And Nolan's like, well, let me make you something else. I was like, all I wanted was pancakes. He's like, let me make you some like eggs and bacon. And I was like, no, I'm not eating anything if I can't have pancakes. Like I got so stubborn. I literally was like heartbroken. The fact that I couldn't eat these pancakes. I'm not like that. Even before my period, I'm not that emotional. Yeah, then I found out I was pregnant. I was like, oh my God. Gosh, that was definitely like a pregnancy <laughs> hormone thing. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. Anyways, that's gonna be it for my first trimester recap. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be posting lots more baby related videos and also some non-baby related videos. Hit the bell so you get notified when I upload. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.